Herman grew up in Herman Square, the village called Ramoti. He's from uh, a family of six, two brothers and four sisters. It was quite um, really a rough life. They had to steal water, they had to steal wood, just, for, just to survive. My name is Connie Mashaba. I am married to Herman Mashaba. We've been married for 34 years now. So I met Herman. It was his uh, second year at varsity. Strong as he is, he couldn't just take what was happening in the country at the time. And uh, when uh, the studies were cut, he wanted to go fight for, for his country. But I was there in the picture, and eventually he decided that he will stay. When he left school, his brother-in-law recruited him to his work at, at SPA. And uh, he worked there for, I think, about nine months. He then went to work for uh, Motani. And I think that's when he realized that he can be on his own because he worked for them for about 18 months. You know, from an early age um, in, our, in our lives, he wanted to be very, very independent to make sure that he doesn't depend on anyone, you know, but himself. And that's what he did. And then from there, we got married and then um, we bought a car. Its purpose really was to bring in the income. Uh, Mr. Majaba came to see me in 1983. We were looking for money. Someone introduced them to Mr. Dube. I used to import soft and free and start soft for hair products from Atlanta, Georgia. When Herman came to see me, he said, look, you've got an idea about the hair product. We are selling the hair product. But I think as a businessman who had an idea of um, importing hair products, knew that this concept was a good concept. And um, that's when he said, yes, guys, I will back you. And the loan that um, he lent to a black like me was about 30,000 rent. And I came up with the name, I said the name black like me. Which was very powerful, evocative, and we thought it would really attract. When he started on the 14th of February, 1985, it was during that time when there was unrest. There was state of emergency one after another. We placed orders and we bought and paid for 5,000 plastic bottles, beautifully printed and developed with this absolutely smashing Black Like Me logo. Connie and the helper was filling our products into beautiful little boxes and Joe and Herman loaded this into their cars. They left about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, very enthusiastic. And I think it was about three o'clock when first Herman pulled into the yard of our factory, jumped out terribly excited. Johan, I'm sold out. I couldn't believe my eyes. A few minutes later, Joe arrived. Johan, I'm sold out. They sold the products at a good price. They came in with a hard cash. Within a year, it was so good that um, we made, which was quite a lot of money at the time, uh, 900,000 rand, you know, the first year. It was five o'clock in the morning, 17th of November, 1993, when we were called, the factory is on fire. I remember a lot of stuff you know, really crying because they didn't know where they were going to go. They thought it was the end of Black Like Me and the end of their jobs. And Herman said to them, you know what? This is the test of life. And I'm going, I'm going to be very strong. I'm going to look for another premises. Within two weeks, we managed to get our premises in Midrand. What we did, we made sure that every staff member coming from Harankua, coming from Haman Skral, none of them lost their jobs. But we still did it, regardless of all those challenges that were there. He's moved on beyond race, and I think he did that long, long ago. I think it's almost the opposite of BEE with him. He was interested in getting the right people as partners, the right people with whom to work. Whether I'm in or I'm not in BE, it will continue. So that's when he decided, you know what, let me rather form Les Weekend. Our main intention was to, at the time, 
was to start off with mining. You know, as a BEE vehicle where he can come in and really invest in different companies. We moved quite quickly to, to establish different businesses. He commits to what um, he believes in. Within a short time, a couple of years, we were involved from mining to construction to uh, property. But also he's very big in terms of um, giving back to the community. He was a patron of Phil Bent Foundation, teaching the kids on life skills through music. He also uh, got involved with women artists. Ten years later, we were already investing about 300,000 in this uh, Black Like Us artist. Some of the artists are already exhibiting in New York, in Australia. The latest one is uh, Free Market Foundation. Herman's involvement with the Free Market Foundation started when he literally invited me to lunch and said, what do we do to save South Africa? We're in a crisis. He's very passionate about it. He's very happy for us to get out there and fight the fight for street vendors or the unemployed or the small businesses. I would classify him as a red character. Energetic, passionate, enthusiastic. He wants to get up and go. But in addition to that, he has principles and values which are important. He mentions this all the time, that if you have integrity, people will trust you. People will give you jobs. People will want to work with you. And, um, and you have one reputation in life. <laughs>